is Fabio Ragasta, uh, who's going to be presenting a joint talk with Silvia Peramonte. Fabio, you should be able to share screen. Yes. Can you see my screen? Can you hear no, me? No, I'm not seeing it. We can hear you, but we can't yet see okay. your screen. Uh, yep, because uh, I, we can. I made it full screen, so take it away whenever you want to. Okay, so. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Fabio Ragosta. I'm a postdoc at the INAF Astronomical Observatory of uh, Rome. And today I'm going to talk about how LSST. Um, maybe this is how LSST will help us uh, to improve our knowledge about the multi messenger astronomy. Uh, and I also will talk about, uh, about the, 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 how the uh, Italian community will endeavor um, the, same, you know, the same goal, uh, uh, meaning the, um, the follow up of uh, electromagnetic counterpart or gravitational wave source. So, uh, basically, we are interested in, um, uh, in multi-messenger uh, source that come uh, that are basically um, um, <clears throat> binary merge, binary compact binary compact object that merging give rise to a bunch of very interesting messenger from neutrinos to uh, gravitational waves and uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, this picture from Barnes et al. 2020 will show an overview of the expected gravitational wave and electromagnetic sig signature from uh, minutes before until years after, after the merging. But uh, the, uh, the main challenge that, that we are uh, having right now is to uh, actually uh, be able to uh, detect uh, the electromagnetic uh, from a gravitational wave uh, trigger. And this is because the uh, localization area from the uh, gravitational wave interferometers uh, are very wide, as you can see from this picture uh, that represent a bunch of um, gravitational waves detected uh, and their localization area. Um, our uh, you know, lucky stars, the uh, GW170817, uh, gave us the uh, gravitational wave uh, the kilonova signal, uh, and we were able to browse, uh, you know, almost rapidly the uh, the area. But because the uh, the localization area is very uh, is very very little with respect to the others, so um, up to now there is no chance that we can browse the uh, entire entire localization area with the uh, with the model and observatories. But LSST uh, is expected to do that due to uh, the very wide. Uh, uh, is much field of view and uh, um, the possibility to browse the entire summer sky almost every every three days, and also because uh, it will be uh, expected to gather uh, a very enormous amount of detections uh, that will allow also to, uh, of course, detect fast, hopefully, uh, fast transients as kilonova. Uh, a work from uh, Igor Andreoni et al. 2012, uh, 2002, 2000, uh, sorry. Uh, 2022 um, show that uh, actually with LSST we will be able to measure to detect uh, actually a kilonova up to uh, an enormous distance. So, um, he, he, they use uh, the kilonova simulations and they uh, apply the selection criteria um, after applying the observing constraint from LSST uh, service uh, observing strategies. Um, and they uh, apply those uh, different uh, different criteria to uh, see if a, a kilonova will be detected or not. The three um, the three line the three colors in this plot show uh, the blue one if the if applying just a simple criteria on the number of uh, data points on the light group detectable. Uh, if they are more than two, then the, uh, the Clonova is considered detected. Uh, while the yellow and the red and the red, uh, and red histograms show uh, how, uh, how, um, how the, detect the detectability of the Clonova uh, is if we apply the same algorithms as they have applied to CTF uh, uh, survey for detecting for search for the Clonova for the Clonova search, and um, even if uh, for the CTF survey they hadn't 
so uh, they wasn't so lucky for detecting kilonobi he suspected for uh, applying the same uh, the same algorithm uh, for the lsst uh, we would be able to uh, to find kilonobi up to uh, 12 1200 uh, um, megaparsec the red is the uh, is the same as the, as the the dark yellow but using just uh, the infrared uh, the, um, the the render filters um, in this framework, the Italian community uh, has been done some work uh, with this Gravita consortium that is a, a collaboration of uh, 18 research institutions uh, uh, that are collaborating also with the engrave and the PESTO groups. Uh, and have the possibility to use uh, uh, some, uh, some observation facilities to follow up interesting, uh, interesting uh, transients and uh, this uh, guru gravity inducing uh, rubin is a is a project uh, that the italian community uh, want to uh, want to um, you know began to uh, to run uh, after the lsst will start um, to uh, <clears throat> to give the possibility to um, having to use all the uh, facilities that uh, the Italian community can use to follow up uh, um, interesting candidates that come from alerts from uh, from the LSST um, from the LSST data. Uh, in this sense, uh, uh, the Italian community is considering to to use uh, LSST either as a follow up machine and a discovery machine due to the, due to the fact that uh, it's expected. Uh, uh, for LSST to discover such transients. Um, so, uh, as a follow-up machine, once the uh, once we can use the, the Italian the, observ the observing facility, uh, Gravita can use, uh, and they if they trig if if, uh, if they can trigger and um, a multi messenger uh, source observation, then uh, LSST uh, could be. Uh, use it uh, to to follow up this transient to gather more uh, more information on it, and uh, in the reverse, uh, if the LSST discover uh, discover some some uh, some interesting candidates, um, the observing uh, facilities uh, uh, Gravita can can use can follow up them. Uh, but there are two key points. So um, you know uh, we have limited researches for the multi way follow up. Uh, and the transient expected to be detected from LST are in uh, are in number enormous, and then there is there should be the possibility to uh, use LST uh, as a follow up machine to of course ask for target opportunity if one of the um, of the Italian observing uh, facility detects some some interesting candidate. Uh, up to uh, until now, I just thought how we uh, we can, uh, in a certain sense, uh, be able to um, to put our effort uh, in uh, um, gather uh, detection and build like light code that can be used uh, to uh, describe uh, such transients as Kilonova. Uh, but uh, from from these slides on, I will talk about the project that uh, I mean I'm leading to uh, to see um, what kind of science we are able to extract from these uh, from these light curves. So, uh, using these uh, using a, a distribution a prior distribution for uh, uh, for the parameters uh, from parameters for a model from uh, uh, Metzger 2017 to describe Kilonovi, I've used uh, this software NMMA to uh, create a, a database of simulated uh, Kilonova light curves. These light curves then uh, uh, to these light curves then were applied the observational constraints from different uh, um, observing strategies uh, uh, from LS that describe different different strategies for LSST uh, and I uh, have obtained um, sort of uh, observed light observed simulated light, light curves uh, uh, from LSST. Uh, this software NMMA also allowed to uh, to fit that uh, light group in, uh, that observed light curves uh, and extract uh, uh, parameters uh, from a given model. Um, and the uh, the goal of this uh, this project is to see uh, what is the expected uh, uh, uncertainties uh, from these uh, 
for this uh, for, for this model and how they impact uh, the knowledge that we can gather on the um, for, for instance on the uh, equation of states of the compact object uh, that you know uh, there are in binary systems that produce such uh, such light curves. Uh, but what is an MMA? An MMA stands for Nuclear Multi-Messenger Astronomy and is an open source produced by Michael Kaplan and collaborator uh, that allow it both to generate light curves and uh, analyze observing observing that. Light curve generation uh, go from uh, can be done uh, from a, a model implementations, and up to now um, they allow to produce. They have models for uh, kilonovae, supernovae, and gamma ray, gamma -ray bars after globes, uh, but it also allow to produce models from from data, applying algorithms for uh, uh, Gaussian processes uh, uh, plus uh, um, um, uh, Gaussian, Gaussian process algorithm and data, redu data reduction uh, algorithm to uh, to you know to create model from data and uh, uh, the possibility to analyze data came from the um, the uh, Bayesian sampler that are um, that are develop developed within an MMA that allow uh, to to fit in models and extract um, you know, knowledge from the, for the parameters. Um, the starting point of this uh, of this work is uh, um, was to understand that almost the theoret theoretical expectation for these uncertainties. So I started from the uh, parameterization of the ejecta mass and velocity uh, with the uh, mass ratio from the Madera system uh, that um, from that Dietrich uh, which uh, 2000, <clears throat> 2017 uh, and, and, and then I um, I uh, estimated the uncertainties on the ejecta mass and velocity uh, in, with, with respect to the, uh, the uncertainty on, uh, um, on the mass ratio through this, um, this function that actually um, is a class on function uh, with respect to the, uh, the primary mass binary system, uh, the class is defined by the, uh, uh, the, the mass ratio. Uh, there are some some assumption on this uh, uh, that, I, that I did on this uh, on this estimation, and basically the, the, the most important one is that baryonic mass um, can be approximated by the gravitational uh, So I <clears throat> I uh, estimated uh, some expression of this uh, of this function uh, given the three uh, three cases. Uh, so mass ratio greater than one, less than one, and almost uh, and almost one, um, and uh, the. Um, the, the representation of these uh, um, of these functions uh, are shown in this two plot. Um, as you can see, um, basically uh, what is expected here is that uh, having uh, um, having growing uh, growing the mass uh, of the primary system, we are expected to uh, be able to. Um, uh, <clears throat> we'll be able to constrain better uh, the, uh, the, the, the uncertainties on the mass ratio um, due to the fact that I'm, I'm speaking about the, the um, given the, the uncertainty on the uh, on the injecta mass, uh, we are able to um, to constrain better the uh, the uncertainty on the um, on the mass ratio. So. Uh, Uncertainties on what uh, on the information about the uh, about the progenitor of the, of the system. Uh, for what for what concern uh, the uh, uncertainty on the uh, on the ejecta velocity, uh, it does not mm, seems to um, to impact too much uh, what we can tell about the uh, the system. So after that, I uh, also. Uh, Tried to understand uh, what what are the what uh, how the performance of our fitting procedure uh, can be impacted by uh, the uh, let's say the quality of the light curve. So having uh, a, um, a having a, a light curve as a, um, as reference. Uh, this is one uh, is uh, using the uh, Metzger models uh, with these parameters. 
uh, in I, and I simulated the, this uh, um, this model in the in six uh, filter that LSSD will observe. I um, I, observe, I changed the uh, the cadence on the of the data point of the data points on the light curve and uh, analyzed how um, the performance of the fitting change uh, changing the cadence of the data point. This function on the y axis. Uh, is a combination of the, the discrepancy of the parameters uh, and the Bayesian information criterion. So as you can see, um, growing the, the cadence between the, uh, the data points, the performance get, uh, get lower. Um, and I also analyzed uh, how the performance change, uh, changing the number of filters, um, and uh, uh, as you can see, uh, using all just three filter, uh, the, um, the performance reach a plateau um, and, uh, and, and also we can see that growing the, the, uh, the number of filters from one to three, the performance grow. And finally, I also analyzed how the performance change, uh, changing the, uh, the, the peak magnitude of the transient in this, in this case, uh, the, the, the simulated Kilonovi, uh, Kilonova, and uh, and uh, as you can see, the, um, also here the performance is, uh, uh, is 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 getting lower and lower, uh, going deeper. With this uh, this exception exception that I'm still kind of figuring out. Uh, so this is the, this is just a, a pre, our pre, preliminary results. Of this ongoing uh, of this ongoing project, uh, so uh, high accuracy on uh, ejecta mass is needed uh, to um, to be able uh, to to gather um, you know more accurate uh, uh, knowledge on the on the progenitor um, accuracy grow using at least uh, three filter observations. Um, and the luminosity of the kilonovae affects massively the uncertainty on the on the parameters. So next step is to um, create this uh, uh, this posterior to analyze this posterior distribution from the uncertainties as a function of, of, of the parameters uh, as a function of service strategies, and also see how the uh, how these uncertainties impact the information on the. Um, on the equation of states. And finally, as a byproduct uh, of this uh, project, I will also uh, build a database of not only simulated uh, kilonovil, but also all fitted uh, parameters from the observed one. Thank you. This is just close my, my open to questions. Thank you very much, Fabio. Do we have any questions for our speaker? Either here or uh, online. Christian, one second. Hi, this is Christian Setzer. Uh, very good talk. I wanted to ask one point of clarification first. Um, the results you're getting here for the astrophysics constraints from the LSST light curves, are you doing this on the serendipitously detected, or are you assuming these are light curves that you've had LSST TOO follow up on? Um, now I'm just considering uh, uh, light curves that are serendipitously detected. Okay. So I um, just injected the simulated light curve into the uh, metric analysis framework and having as a product of it the observed light curves they are serendipitously observed during okay. the operation. Uh, I, just one quick follow-up on that. Uh, this may be a little bit preemptive given the topic of the next talk, but I wanted to ask your opinion, given that this is based on serendipitous detections, what is your feeling for our ability to actually be able to classify these that we will detect in the survey? I, it's something I'm very concerned about myself, and I just wondered what your opinion on that was. Um. I, for what I, for what I'm seeing from my from my simulations, uh, um, it's not expected that we can uh, gather um, without follow-ups too many points, uh, too many data points to be able to to be sure to say uh, yes, we will classify immediately a kilonovi. Uh, that's my that's my feeling up to now. I hope this answers your question. Great, um, Anirban and then Deep, please. And feel free to unmute and speak up. 
yeah uh, thanks so it was a nice talk uh, i have a question like uh, may i may have missed this but uh, this nma in mma uh, models which you mentioned so are these uh, based on reddit transfer or like uh, what kind of models are this i i may i didn't understand okay so uh, these models uh, are uh, are basic also just to show that so um, these are models uh, um, that are made, uh, um, they're gathered from um, many, I think, through them. I, I'm, I'm not so much into the, the modeling of this, uh, uh, of this so how, you know, how they work, how they are produced, but I'm pretty sure that um, they uh, use it, uh, uh, hmm. I don't, I don't want to. I want to say something that it's not, you know, like uh, entirely true. So um, for sure, there are, um, you know, the Kilonova, the Kilonova models uh, are based on the, uh, you know, toy models from Matsir uh, at Matsir et al. Uh, 2017. Uh, those models uh, uh, used uh, used. Um, yeah, use some simple uh, assumption on uh, um, on on the on you know, on the explosion on the <clears throat> of the binaries um, on the binary system, and they start uh, you know um, they start estimate the uh, the radiation after the uh, the explosion happened. So um, basically, the uh, the model from Max from Max year two thousand seventeen. Um, consider uh, the uh, the mass uh, the mass of the eject and, and from you know as it as it was already there so without uh, you know that that eject mass for this model doesn't know um, from where where it came from basically and then it's most um, uh, more or less like evolution uh, for the uh, of the materials given uh, given the energy injected by the um, by the explosion. I hope uh, I hope this answers your question. But there are a bunch of models uh, in the in, uh, in the uh, in the software that I have not that are not used. So I'm I'm not sure uh, what they're based on. Um, so I cannot entirely answer your questions. Uh, hopefully, uh, I hope I answered the you know, fourth part of the yeah. Kilonova. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, Andy? Hey, Fabio. Uh, thanks, thanks, Gautam. Hey, Fabio, great talk. I was want wondering, have you done some kind of model comparison? Meaning, if you, uh, seems like you have some light curve simulations using, say, the Metzger models, but uh, as you know, most of these models are parameterized by different uh, parameters. So I'm wondering if you have done some kind of uh, model mismatch or um, you know, maybe simulate with one model and uh, do your parameter estimation with a different model and whether uh, what's the level of consistency? Yeah, uh, not yet. I have not done yet the model comparison also because um, you know the only models in I'm using also these anime. Uh, I'm you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing some like uh, like verification work for uh, how I actually this model works. Uh, and up to now, they uh, just have uh, developed this model from uh, Metzger 2017. But of course, uh, they can be implemented more uh, using different kind of uh, models. So. Once we have a model, we can also um, inject in the, uh, you know, in the in, in the model framework for an MMA to work, and I can also com compare them. But up to now, I haven't. And uh, there was a Thank second you. question I, that I, I did not got it, so they didn't get it. So if you can, if you can. Uh, not for me. I think I'm I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for uh, giving me that. Uh, can I ask a quick follow up though? Uh, all the models you were using didn't seem to have any kind of afterglow component to them. Is there much hope of LSST actually ever seeing the afterglow, or is do you just need much higher cadence because it fades too rapidly? Is there any hope we'll see like a proton neutron star? Or... 
Um, okay. Uh, actually, uh, the, the model I'm uh, uh, in this first stage of the uh, of you know of the of the study, uh, I just used uh, Kilonova without uh, without the afterglow part. But uh, of course, the, uh, or you mean the afterglow of the kilonova? You, do you mean? No, I meant with, with the afterglow component. And you know, I think that that would actually enhance detectability for some small fraction because it does, it it does. But it's not included in the in this in this simulation I'm, in this work I was showing. I was showing you uh, uh, the the assumption here that you are uh, looking at the uh, you know like just and the kilonova. Thank you so much. Uh, let's thank Fabio again. Thank you. And uh, Fabio, if you can have you